so <coughs> uh, when I uh, see some uh, example projects on uh, GitHub and also browse games and so on, I have seen many people do some pretty mm, weird things and uh, not create uh, truly reusable and modular code. And also I have uh, <coughs> made a few games lately which I think were good examples of uh, how uh, reusable components can be made. So I will make a few examples first and then uh, talk a bit. Uh, so <coughs> for the first example we want to make a settings page and uh, for uh, some additional speed I already have it all uh, made in Godot so I can jump right in uh, so on this page we have some uh, random settings which uh, I won't uh, discuss much and uh, we also have uh, a key bindings menu and the key bindings menu is a bit uh, weird because uh, we have to have a script for it, right? <coughs> and uh, also we might want to reuse the script. So let's first make it the stupid way and then I will show the smarter way. It's not very stupid actually. So uh, the first way would be just to go to the settings menu and add a script which does everything it's uh, not a big deal so let's just make a script and maybe I should copy it should I? let's copy it <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I will just go through it step by step because it's uh, easier that way so first I go over all the children in the uh, chat notes in the keys menu and uh, find all these buttons and uh, I just uh, connect the toggle signal so that I know when to uh, rebind an action uh, <coughs> afterwards I just uh, uh, have the rebind fu uh, function which listens to that and just starts uh, listening uh, for the action and uh, uh, make sure make sure that no other buttons are toggled because that would be pretty bad for example rebinding multiple settings at the same time and finally if uh, I'm listening for some action I just uh, and receive an input event I just uh, update the button and update uh, the input map mapping and make sure that I stop listening uh, so this is pretty much the code which uh, can be written in maybe 10 minutes I'm going to run it just so you can hmm? oh that's F7 sorry uh, so just to see that it actually works uh, we can rebind things so it's good So, that's good, but uh, it has a problem. We can't reuse any of this. So, for example, if I want to add a pose menu, which also has key bindings, mm, I cannot reuse it there. And also, the script is actually pretty complicated. I mean, uh, well, because it's on the settings node. So, if I want to reuse it, I can probably move it to the keys menu and uh, then I can reuse it and it's fine but I still have repetition I still have these actions which are repeated and uh, as you can see it's actually repeated the same everywhere so we always have a label, a button and an hbox container so an even nicer thing is uh, that we can do is uh, just separate this as a scene Godot makes it very easy what? sorry should have thought of that okay we are fine now 
So I can save this as a scene and let's call it an action or key binding maybe. And uh, I will remove the second one and duplicate the first. And uh, now I cannot con control the text. So I have to add a script which does this. And this script will We'll get two scripts so we can see links in the editor, but uh, currently I'm going to do it without it being two script because it's faster. So, no. Okay, let me just copy the very basics. So, that's uh, the usual way in <laughs> through which I set up. Uh, a property I have it uh, with a set get so that I can update it and maybe later make it a two script then in ready I just uh, call the setter because it uses some of the child nodes and I have to be inside the tree for that well not exactly but uh, the setter is basically called uh, before the child nodes are even instanced so I have to call it again after that and then uh, I just uh, fix the label text and then go through uh, the event list to find the text for the button. And that's pretty much it. And uh, now I made a mistake. Uh, this should have been on the scene. So let me just go there and put it correct. Okay. So now uh, I have the script on both nodes. And uh, if I run the scene, mm, nothing in space. That's not good. I forgot to set the variable. <laughs> oh, jump. And boost. So now I have a proper key binding menu. And I actually remo removed some of the repetition. But we can do better. We can actually uh, get the whole binding and rebinding uh, things uh, out of uh, the settings menu and into the scene. So for that I will first uh, connect a signal, the toggle signal maybe. Oh wait, actually I don't need a signal. I now remember. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so basically uh, when we receive an input event We can check if the event is a put event key. And then we can check if the button is pressed, because if it isn't pressed, we are not rebinding it. And in this case, uh, I'm just going into the other script and copying from there. Uh, we basically want to do all of this. So let's see. First, we have to set the input as handled. So if somebody presses down, it doesn't go to the lower button because that, that wouldn't be good. Uh, then we clear the events for the action and uh, put the new event there. Then we update the button text. And uh, we also make sure it is not pressed because otherwise the next event will also pass through here. And finally, uh, this is not needed. So now, uh, actually, we removed uh, one big uh, script and uh, replace it, uh, replaced it with uh, some scenes and a smaller s script. So, success! <laughs> and also there are some other improvements. For example, uh, the addition of this for loop uh, which takes the action list and finds the action which is currently bound actually means that uh, we do not uh, we no longer hard code the initial buttons into the menu into the menu because uh, we have to find them anyway and uh, also uh, we can do even better uh, we don't have to duplicate this line. We can actually just 
uh, call the other function so that it updates the button. It's a bit weird, but uh, works. So now, if I run it, uh, we can see that we have a new menu which works even better. But uh, <coughs> uh, so far, uh, while doing uh, making things more reusable, uh, there is a slight issue. I noticed that we lost some functionality. Basically, I can now click both buttons and then find something to bolt. <coughs> and that's not good. Uh, but it's pretty easy to fix uh, because uh, Godot has uh, <coughs> something called uh, button groups. So I can just make a new button group for all key bindings. That's it. I think. Oh, whoops, wrong scene. And it should work. No, I didn't test it. I'm sorry. <laughs> so. Hmm. Let's see what we can do actually because we are coding live, right? <laughs> <coughs> okay, so maybe we hit some bug. Anyway, this should work, but if it doesn't, uh, we can either use the button group to get other buttons and disable them, or maybe do something like emitting a signal from the key binding and catching it in the, uh, on the main scene. So it's uh, not that bad. Uh, and also, uh, if we uh, want to reuse the keys, uh, key bindings menu in the post scene, uh, now we don't have to include uh, this title and separator because maybe the post menu looks different and it won't fit there. So that's another plus. Uh, so uh, that will be it for this example, Th there will be another example, but I would like to ask if there are any questions so far. Yes? Another question, but I think the button group will work if you change it out as a default and just change it to that default, because I think the uh, password, I think it's probably... Oh, wow, it's local to see. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I if I disable local to see, it should work. Yes. <laughs> so now maybe it works. Yes. Okay. Thanks. I uh, didn't uh, knew that uh, it instances uh, local to scene by default. Okay. <laughs> Someone should write the documentation. Yes. Uh, so that I don't make s stupid mistakes in production. <coughs> okay. Other questions? Okay, so uh, that's for the first example. And we will return to it at some point, so let's leave it open. And the second example is a player scene. Mm, where is that? Okay, here is it. So we have this player which has a nice fire looking particles effect. Uh, it's not very good because I didn't put too much time in it, but it's mostly good. It actually looks so much different on my screen, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> Feature, yeah. So basically, uh, we want to make a script which changes the color of the particles so that we ha can have either different color particles or something like that. Uh, let's say I'm prototyping a game and I just want to add different colored particles. So I will go, uh, go for three colors. One is uh, this uh, color, which is fire, and maybe some ice and water colors so that I can have some more uh, mechanics coming from that. So for that, I will make a script, uh, okay, which will be a tool script because I actually want to see these colors in editor. 
and uh, let's see uh, how we can do it first without making it very re reusable so maybe I can copy it <laughs> so I will copy at minimum this part because I don't want to pick the colors again oh yeah I don't have the set get so So we make a new color. Uh, so yeah, we don't make a new color actually. So if we are inside the tree, so uh, it's not the first call of the setter. Uh, sorry. Uh, what we do is just uh, get the particles node and set its modulate to the color from the colors array and uh, I shouldn't re uh, forget to call it in ready and uh, actually does it work currently? okay it already works so it's uh, pretty simple and now I have a player which can change colors and that's cool I like it so maybe <laughs> after making this uh, elemental colors player I want to make an uh, enemy which also has elemental colors so I have something which I can reuse in this case and uh, one idea is to just make this script uh, the base script and then uh, instance it in both the player scene oh, I mean I inherit from it uh, from both the player script and the enemy script that would be decent but uh, there is a slight problem with it with it for example it uh, extends kinematic body to d it actually doesn't use anything from it so mm, we actually uh, we can actually make it extend from node to d uh, it won't work but we can do it uh, so that's a waste and it means that uh, for example we cannot have an enemy which uh, is a rigid body so maybe we want an uh, enemy which falls and bounces but we cannot do this because it, it, won't, it won't be a rigid body so that's maybe not the best way to do it <coughs> and if you look carefully at the script we can, use, uh, we can see that the only thing we are actually changing is the particles to d so we can actually put the whole script on the particles to d node so let's do this i will just okay I leave the defaults there mm, and i will just copy my whole script change the extents and fix the this thing and now I can remove the script for the player from the player for the moment so now I can uh, also switch colors and uh, that's not all I'm gaining the ability to use uh, for example a projectile which is not a kinematic body but for example a rigid body or an enemy which doesn't have anything to do with kinematic or rigid bodies also I gained the ability to actually have multiple particles so I can maybe make another part uh, particles and um, just change the material so maybe they go faster up and uh, have a darker color but yeah, uh, you have to make this unique as well I already messed up this once so I don't do it twice <laughs> So mm, that would be my smoke, uh, smoke like particles if it works. So no damping. And we can't see them because uh, they're additively blended and we made a uh, black material. So let's just clear this. Ooh, that's some smoke. <laughs> okay, now we have smoke. 
and we can actually use the same script for both and even change their colors at once. And uh, we also gain the ability to have, uh, for example, an enemy which uh, combines all three elements and <coughs> somehow has all the particles inside it without having to make it in three separate parts. <coughs> so by just moving the script, we made it more reusable. Uh, so, questions? Maybe? So far? Not a question, but to reword maybe, make sure I fully understand. <coughs> we advocate for whenever possible move the script further down the tree and not always yeah. in the root node and cover everything. Yeah, that's uh, one of the things. The other is to just uh, pick the smallest part and uh, make it modular instead of making one big script which does everything because big scripts that <laughs> do everything are hard to understand and are hard to modify to fit uh, other use cases later and that way you can actually save time later on for example by just uh, you can even for example take this key binding thing and for example put it in some instructions inside the tutorial so people can key bind from there and so on, uh, you gain more possibilities just by m making it small and reusable. And if you want to modify your style, you modify yeah. one screen. Yeah. Uh, when you have something specific, for example, let's say that you make this, and then you decide that you want to have three types of enemies uh, for each element, you uh, <coughs> either have to add a script here which exports the property, or you can actually make them separate scenes. So you have a fire enemy, a ice enemy, and a water enemy scene. And that's, that's not a problem because it's just three. And you can also that way add them, <laughs> add some uh, specific behavior to each. So for example, the fire enemy is very aggressive and goes to you directly. While the others are more cold. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, I had some notes for the ending, so I will just switch to them because I honestly forget them very fast. <laughs> so, uh, basically, I will just read them, and you can't, so that's good. <laughs> so, uh, in at first, making uh, parts of the game reusable makes it more modular and thus more maintainable and uh, fixing bugs in such uh, reusable and maintainable code is actually easier because you have less code to keep in mind <coughs> and also doing uh, reusable components from the start is useful even when prototyping because you can get ideas from there and also reuse them in multiple places in the prototype and uh, making a component reusable from a non-reusable one is also not very hard in Godot because you can just copy most of the script and change a few things here and there <coughs> and a few notes about uh, how to select what to reuse because not everything is a good candidate for making something reusable. So for example, if you have a player scene, you don't want, for example, the move, jump, and whatever other behavior you have to be reusable because maybe only the player needs them. So if you <coughs> want to have it in multiple places with almost no differences, like the key bindings, reuse for sure. And that way you you can actually get some flexibility out of it and also if you have uh, some repetitive structure and you don't reuse it and it means that uh, you're going to have trouble changing it later on if you want to change it so for example if uh, uh, what i don't want this so for example in the key bindings menu if i wanted to make the key binding text uh, for example glow a bit when the binding is clicked so players can check their keyboards fast or something 
I can just add an animation player, make the animation glow, for example, and just uh, okay, glow would be a bit weird, but I can do that. So maybe just uh, have a shadow. Can we do that? And uh, okay. So at first we are going to find those outlines and we can just make them for example to one so it glows a bit visually. It won't look good but con uh, concessions have to be made. But why one? So and then I can just go into the script. and uh, maybe check if event is action pressed my action just get the animation player and play flow and uh, we can actually test it and uh, I don't have to make it for every button yeah and Okay, so let me just press A. Does it work? That's weird. Uh, it should work. <laughs> but uh, as I said, it should be easier to fix bugs in this, so maybe we can fix it. No, I don't want to. Okay, Z. Anything it output? Yes. So it actually plays the animation, but we cannot see it because it's small or something. So maybe I should just make it like 10 and it looks terrible. Can we do that? <laughs> uh, actually, I should play it in the editor. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that's fun. Why not? Why not? What can go wrong? Oh, okay. What can go wrong? Uh, sorry, uh, wrong scene. So I <coughs> press Z. Okay. <laughs> uh, so. <coughs> Second uh, consideration is if it's going to be used in multiple places, but there can be differences. For example, the keys menu, uh, in I can use it in the pause menu, but maybe it won't have the separator and the key bindings title. In this case, uh, maybe a base uh, script or a base scene would be more useful. So I can probably just make the key binding script and not the whole scene reusable. Uh, also, for example, if I want to reuse uh, this uh, title and separator thing, I can just make a scene out of this. And uh, then I can instance it for the keys and the graphics, but that's probably an overkill. And uh, uh, finally, if uh, we're going to use it just if in a few places with very large differences or some large differences it's probably better not to reuse it so far so for example if I have a player and <coughs> something else for example an enemy which have similar code maybe I shouldn't merge them uh, with a base script because mm, at some point I will have to add many things to this base script which will just bloat it and it's only a player and an enemy, nothing else. But maybe if I have many enemies which are very similar, I should merge them. As, and also, for example, this key binding and graphics menus, they're pretty nice and I can make a scene out of that. But it's used only in two places. I don't gain anything that way. 
if I use it in many menus, then all right. And uh, for example, as the last example, maybe uh, this uh, lights option, it is probably a good idea to reuse it. But uh, just making this whole thing, uh, seeing calling it an option, it's counterproductive because at some point I'm going to get, for example, checkbox options or maybe some option where you type a uh, number. So maybe there should be just a base script which, uh, or a singleton which just saves and loads uh, settings. And then uh, some other scripts which are for the different kinds of settings. Or maybe for the whole settings menu. So that was it from me. And uh, maybe last question. <laughs> Yes. Uh, I'm not against reusable code yes. components, but sometimes I've seen code that has really many nodes. Yeah. And there was this debate on the same machine pattern. Yeah. That suddenly can explode because you have a tree with many nodes. Yeah. And then getting overview of the behavior is really hard. Mm -hmm. So the comment was about uh, the pi uh, the uh, state machine pattern, pin state machine pattern, when made with nodes, uh, you actually have so many nodes that you probably lose the context about the behavior. So maybe we shouldn't go too far with reusable code. And uh, I definitely agree with that. There are things that, uh, like game logic, that probably shouldn't be made into nodes. You can reuse uh, code without nodes. I mean nodes are just uh, method for using code but you can probably just make it with a script with some functions. Functions are also a way for reusing code so everything applies to them as well. So yeah any other questions maybe?